It is day number three of my first archery elk hunt. And honestly, my first kind of real hunt. My brother just took off. He's got to head back home. So I got two more days. We got skunked in our first area. Didn't even see any elk. We're learning a lot or <laughs> we're gaining a lot of questions to ask to learn more. Uh, I'm just going to go in solo to the next area. And uh, fingers crossed. Well, it's actually kind of nice to be back out on the road. I was able to talk to a couple of hunters. What they were telling me is their buddy saw a herd of elk in here the weekend before the opener, i.e. this weekend. So, we'll see. They hadn't seen anything either. He's got the same tag as I do. Uh, nothing, but we'll see. New spot. Who knows? That's the area I'm looking at. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. There's a camp up here. Camp right here. But I'm gonna. I'm just gonna backpack in there. Cross my fingers. Let's go. So my plan is to jump up on the other side of this, see what it looks like. I might just camp right here, uh, maybe half a mile from the truck, maybe a mile. Because if I do sit, get something, think positive here, I gotta get it out. Elk are big animals. So, I'm thinking somewhere around here I might set up shop. We'll see. Ooh, and I hear running water right there. Because I need water. <laughs> set up here and uh, this I don't know if I've shown you guys this I've been using this for quite a while I have two of them I have a smaller one um, this I've definitely shown you guys this is what's saving me up here on five days that's what's keeping me going battery wise and that's just keeping that topped off there's my uh, watery water filtering system I did some of that earlier today as I was cooking lunch now I'm off to do some glassing, I think. At least get to know the area and then we'll see what type of glassing I can do. Here's some areas I'll be glassing. That's pretty close to me, obviously, but I'll keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on that stuff over there. But like I said, this is a big learning experience. I can watch all the videos, all the podcasts, listen to all the podcasts that I want, but there's just nothing like getting out and doing it. here for five days you gotta poop 
so I'm right in the middle of my business and I'm behind a tree my top half is in camo and I hear crack that that uh, that dead stick on the ground break from something stepping on it and then I can hear the hoofs and I look over and uh, she was about as surprised to see me as I was to see her this doe come running up 12 yards I've never had that happen before. That's a first. <laughs> oh, bloody time is. It's 3.21 in the morning. And I keep hearing something. Whatever it is, it sounds big. <laughs> I'm just yelling at it to go away. Because I'm trying to sleep. <clears throat> I don't know what it is. I'm thinking of moose. You never know. It's probably some filled mouse. It just sounds big. Or that's what I'm going to tell myself. Because it's big, whatever it is. Uh, so, in all honesty, what I'm doing is just... Like I told you, I'm telling it to go away. I'm talking to it. Whatever it is. And I did grab that. I just have that. I'm using my boot. That's just outside the hammock as a holster. Uh, that way I don't have to rip it out of Kydex or anything. I just have it sitting in the boot. But that's why I bring it. so I might as well glass a little bit see if I do see anything but with the cattle down there I just I don't know frustrating I'm gonna try to get away from these cattle if I can we'll see I just hit my knee on a 
big old branch. So I'm moving positions to get away from those cows, like I said, right? Yeah. They're just everywhere up here. I'm trying to get to the other side here. Look down. I first hunted when I was 12 years old with my dad and it's been um, almost exactly a year, just a, a hair over a year since he passed. And uh, you know, being up here is kind of a way to connect with him a little bit. Those, those years that I went hunting with him when I was, when I was young uh, were quite impactful to me. I mean, he was never really a big hunter. Um, he did enjoy getting out but um, we went out for uh, three years I think I was 12 13 14 years old and went mule deer hunting and it was a lot of fun it was just you know a good time to spend with my dad and really hang out with him and like I said it was just very impactful You know, with my brother being up here, you know, it's, I don't, I don't mind the solo thing. I, I really don't, but I do really enjoy sharing this experience with someone, you know, especially family, someone close to you, a good friend or something like that. I'll tell you, my brother and I had some <laughs> wickedly funny conversations. We were both reminiscing about college. There's about an eight-year eight year difference between the two of us. We actually went to the same college, though. But of some of the things we did, man, I was laughing so hard I was crying. And they just go down there and they're just so timid and scared. That's kind of what I felt like. Check this out. You know what that is? Oh man, that is porcupine quills. So these things are actually, uh, this will focus. These are barbed on the ends. I can feel it. So if they get in you, like a fish hook kind of they don't want to come out watch this one get a good angle on here see how it actually pulls the the material is hooked in there it's crazy so here's my water filtration look at all that in the bottom i'll show you why in just a minute but i need to go get some water 
so I got lucky and there's a bunch of springs up here problem is there's been so much cattle running around this area there's no way I'm gonna be drinking straight from the springs up here so this is something that I do when I'm out backpacking or in this case hunting is I'm looking for areas like this and what you can see you, you get to know at least in in the areas you visit what contains water so I can tell that that's all marshy stuff water's in there the challenge with this system where it it uh, where a pump excels is in this scenario so if you look at this grass oh I can smell it too it smells good it reminds me of being a kid and out camping with my family you see that's this is all water in here all that grass is water so I can't fill up a bladder with that but this is what's saving me but this is where I'm getting water <clears throat> Actually, I'll try to get it from right there. I came in last night and kind of cleared that out a little bit last time I was here. And that will give me the water that I need. This is day four of five. I probably need to <laughs> rinse off a little bit. I can't explain it, and I don't think it's going to show on camera, but I got up from a nap and I'm brushing my teeth I'm kind of doing some things right now this light out here seems really really strange wow this is weird and then it dawned on me the eclipse so I think the eclipse is starting time it is two three o'clock somewhere around there I'm striking out I'm gonna bumble around see if I can't kick something up You know, I absolutely love the wandering aspect of hunting. Hope you can hear me, the wind's kicking up. I love the strategic side of hunting, which leads me into the learning side of hunting, which I've got to do much of that. But the thing is, that's not ever going to end. Even if I'd been hunting a whole lifetime, this is certainly one of those pursuits that the knowledge, the learning aspect of it does not end. All right, I haven't been over here. There's cattle over here too. 
and find me a good spot and then see what I can see. All right, I'm gonna take the Benchmade Griptilian here and we're gonna carve something out of this stick. Check this out, things are about to go down. So you got the cows on the left side of the fence, cows on the right side of the fence. I think they're getting ready to brawl. There you go. Considering an old dead piece of wood, some of it's rotted, that'll do. some weather brewing around me. So far it's skirting me, but keep an eye on it. A little bit of thunder going on, not bad. Well, I gotta hurry and get the hell off this mountainside. I got some massive thunder rolling in right on top of me. Enough that it's making me very uncomfortable. Way too close for comfort here, guys. The thing that sucks is it's like getting close to prime time when all these animals are gonna be coming out. Just hit over there. That's the one. Gosh, man, I do not like that. I'm gonna go a little bit lower here. not like that. tree it seems like gonna be as good as any to sit and ride this out I hope gosh dang man just to check the time it's it is uh, seven o'clock so but this is what happens when you're outdoors I guess you know this is what always what I talk about is just watching the skies making sure you're paying attention to those things Well, no lightning now for about, I don't know, five, ten minutes. Rain's coming down pretty good. I've been sitting on that hillside for hours. You'd be amazed what the right pine tree can do for you during a pretty good rainstorm. You get the right one, and I mean, there's a few of them that are coming through, but other than that, I'm really quite dry in here. I moved back over to my gear because if memory serves correct, I need to fact check this, make sure I'm correct. But they say you need to wait at least 20 or 30 minutes 
again I will fact check after the last lightning strike before you can start feeling comfortable so yeah it's been about that I haven't heard anything but the rain has not let up smells extremely good though nothing like rain in the mountains that smell Oof. this makes me wish I would have brought my gators so the sun or the rain has let up I think it's done I only think I'm gonna head back up the hill I don't know if you can tell but that's what I just brush busted it down like a scared little girl to get down to the bottom and the rain has started again so we're just gonna have to wait this out and play this out. If you look at the skies over here, it looks like it's gonna let up here in a little bit. It's not coming down as hard as it was, but it's coming down. And it's coming down again. The end of day four, uh, by the time the rain let up, it just wouldn't have made any sense going back up there. So, oh well, that was uh, kind of a bust, but that's what happens sometimes when you come out here. So I'm just ready to go to bed. We'll play a little bit in the morning. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna record tomorrow. So I might just sign off and just do some playing. So thanks much for watching guys. This has been a blast. The other piece that I wanted to add to this is that, you know, did I come away empty handed? Absolutely not. No, I didn't get an elk. No, I didn't see an elk. <laughs> but man, did I learn a lot. Did I have a lot of fun experiences? Uh, I had that moose jump when I was going to go down there and get water right by the river. And I mean, nothing is better than getting a start like that, man. That jump starts your heart, gets the adrenaline going, makes you feel alive. Uh, all kinds of stuff but uh, more importantly from the uh, hunting perspective what this trip was about um, I learned a lot and I definitely have more questions than answers so that gives me a lot to do when I get home to research and I look forward to doing this again we'll see you